and we have just started our uh, Lenten season. And talking about Lenten season, uh, we know that uh, some of us uh, follow spiritual disciplines, such as we pray, we reflect on the cross, we reflect on the pain and suffering of Jesus, and we meditate on his life, we meditate on his teachings and his ministry. And we also do, uh, we also do fasting. We sometimes we fast one or two meals a day. Uh, we refrain from non-veg meals for the season. We withhold things from social media and other things that other things that distract us. But we think more about the cross and Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes we follow these disciplines for our spiritual growth. That we want to know God more. That we want to honor Him through our life and worship. But we, we should never come to a place of boasting about such spiritual, uh, such disciplines in public rather than it is just between God and you. And the point is that we will not carry these disciplines just for the season, but throughout our life. And that's my encouragement this morning, not just for the season, but that we would carry this, all these spiritual disciplines that will make us go closer to God, right? And we would do this just you know, just to, uh, um, you know, uh, come closer to him. And this should be throughout our life. And today we're going to be looking at staying spiritually hungry. How many of you are hungry? <laughs> uh, yeah, all of us are hungry, right? But, but today we're going to be talking about spiritual hunger. Merriam-Webster dictionary says, um, the meaning of hunger is this, a craving or urgent need for food or, or a specific nutrient. Uh, it is a strong desire, craving, it's a strong desire. And what do you do with, when you get hungry? You eat whatever you desire and you eat whatever that satisfies you. I still remember, um, you know, this was a couple of years ago. I was in the U.S. for a long time, uh, nearly four weeks, and I was really craving for Indian food. And I told Mildred, I'm going to reach home at this particular time. And all I want to do is as soon as I land, I want to give you a hug. I want to give our children a hug and a kiss. And the next thing I want to do is I want to eat my favorite spicy mutton curry, right? Hunger. You're craving, you're longing for it. But what does Bible talk about spiritual hunger? How can you stay spiritually hungry? And I want you to turn your attention to Matthew's gospel, chapter 5, verse 6. We just read that a while ago. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The Amplified Version says, Blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. Let's look at the key words in this verse. First is hunger and thirst. Now, Jesus here is not talking about physical hunger. And we all know what is physical hunger, right? And by God's grace, we are, we are all in a place that God has been graciously providing us food. And, and sometimes we've never experienced hunger, by the way, right? But according to United, United Nations, more than 690 million people were were undernourished in 2019, 690 million people. And this is mostly in Asia and Africa. And the statistic says that by the end of 2030, about 820 million people will go hungry globally. I still remember in 2008 when I was in Bangladesh, it was, it was the first country for me to visit and I've just you know, uh, graduated from Bible school and I've joined this YWAM in Bangladesh and, and all I had was the domestic uh, ATM card, which means it is, it is used only in India. We cannot use it outside India. And uh, little knowledge I had, and I, you know, uh, landed in Bangladesh and be part of this YWAM, beautiful discipleship training school for six months. And, uh, and during the outreach, and I had to go to one of the, go to one of the remote places in Bangladesh. I had very little money. In fact, zero, I would say, I think it was zero, no money at all. And I was so hungry, so hungry. And I could not ask my friends 
And that was the first time I experienced hunger. And I really thought, oh, well, this is what starvation means, right? I did not have two meals. My body was physically tired. It was so hot. And you have to go in a ferry and, in, in, and, and get into a bus. And the bus will get into a ferry and reach another place. And I was so hungry and there was no money. I was like asking God, Lord, I need to eat something. I'm, I'm starving. And I was looking for food, cheap food, for 10 rupees food, 5 rupees food. All I can do is I'm looking for that food so that I could just eat something and satisfy my belly. And satisfy my hunger, right? And miraculously, God provided. And I, I ate and I was satisfied. And that was the first time I experienced hunger. Oh, this is what hunger looks like. But here in, God, in God's word, Jesus is talking about a different kind of hunger. Jesus is talking about a hunger that you eagerly desire, that you hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jesus is saying that you should want to be righteous just as much as a starving person wants to be fed. Amen. You should long to become righteous just as much how a starving person is looking for food and how much he's wanting to be fed. And what does this righteousness mean? Righteousness, you know, in ancient Judaism, it, it meant to acquit, to vindicate, to restore to a right relationship, right relationship with God and right relationship with people. So this morning, I want to give two ways that you can stay spiritually hungry. Two ways that you can stay spiritually hungry. The first one is this. You can stay spiritually hungry by practicing a righteous lifestyle. By practicing a righteous lifestyle. The word righteous uh, appears nearly 540 times in the Bible. And the question we need to ask ourselves is how how to practice a righteous lifestyle and what happens to us when we practice a righteous lifestyle two points you need to actively seek to be right with god amen actively seek to be right with god in the midst of whatever that is going on your heart posture must be right with God in spite of whatever that is going on maybe hardships maybe trials maybe sickness whatever it is that your heart is right with God you actively seek to be right with God and how can you be how can you practice this uh, righteous lifestyle that you shun evil no matter what there is no room for evil in our lives no matter what that there is no wickedness in our lives not allowing any evil thoughts to turn into evil actions amen and here are the blessings associated with uh, living a righteous life Proverbs 24 16 it says for though the righteous fall seven times they rise again but the wicked stumble when the calamity strikes no no matter whatever the hardship that you're going, going through, no matter whatever trials that you're facing, the Bible says the righteous man will rise again. It talks about resiliency. It talks about how tough a righteous man can be, right? So he says, no matter whatever hardships are, righteous man will withstand all of those. And the bottom line is this, because you're right with God, you're able to stand. Because you're right with God, even though you're falling seven times, you're able to stand up. All because you're right with God. Psalm 85, verse 10, it is poetically written, Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Now, righteousness and peace kiss each other because they belong to each other. If righteousness is lacking, not just carefully, if righteousness is lacking, peace will be lacking. If righteousness is present, peace will be present. Isaiah 32, 17, it says, The fruit of righteousness.
righteousness will be peace. If you want to live a peaceful life, there's a desire, there's hunger and thirst for righteousness. Amen. So by practicing a righteous lifestyle, you enjoy peace. You enjoy that harmony. You enjoy that completeness. You enjoy that prosperity. You enjoy that welfare. It all comes with that beautiful searching, hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Have you wondered why God said this? Seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things add, will be added unto you. That's what it means. We should hunger and thirst for righteousness. We should look for God's kingdom. We should, we should look for that. And always go and, and never come to a place that you say, oh, okay, I'm satisfied and this is enough. No, you should always hunger. This, there is this holy dissatisfaction. That just, just say, God, I want more. This is not enough. I want more. And that's one of the ways that you can stay spiritually hungry by practicing a righteous lifestyle. And the second point is this. How can you practice? Uh, how can you stay spiritually hungry? The second one is by growing a deeper relationship with God. By growing a deeper relationship with God. Do you know that even good things can become a routine? Just think about this, going to a gym, spending time with a friend, reading a book or watching a movie, even good things can become a routine. It can become a pattern. And one of the patterns lately in my life is walking Milo, walking my dog, <laughs> you know, getting up, feeding him, taking, and he knows by 9.30, he gives me a look that, 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 that look conveys a message, human, please take me out. <laughs> human please feed me and that has become a pattern 9 30 and then six o'clock in the evening it has become a pattern it has become a method it is already in my system right spend spending time with god shouldn't be a routine spending time with god shouldn't be a method i'll explain what is this did i pray today yes did i worship god today yes did I pray for other people? Yes. Did I put certain things, what I've observed from God's scripture on social media? Yes. Did I forward my meditation to 20 people? Yes. Did I support missionaries? Yes. Did I give my tithes and offerings? Yes. These are all fantastic, but these, these shouldn't be a routine. Time with God should never consider be as a routine or a method. Instead, it must turn into a journey. Amen. This is a journey with God. This is not a routine. This is a journey with God. Your, your relationship with God should be moving. It shouldn't stay in one place. It shouldn't be stagnant. As I was praying and, and meditating on this word, I, was, I, I came with this beautiful, you know, uh, thought uh, in, my, in my, you know, you know, processing time, I would say, it says, you know, if, if I have to rate my spiritual life 10 out of 10, right, if I have to rate my spiritual life 10 out of 10, I don't have a desire to grow in the Lord. And I don't make intentional steps to know him more or to grow deeper in relationship with God. Basically, I have scored zero. Because I have not made any constant effort in knowing God more. You can read your spiritual life. Well, I'm doing all of this. I'm praying every day. I'm worshiping God every day. You know, I'm praying for other people. I'm supporting missionaries. I'm doing my tithes and offerings. All of these are wonderful and great. And you say my spiritual life is 10 out of 10, but you don't have a desire to know God more than actually we have scored zero. We need to cultivate that desire in us. We need to cultivate that desire that we make this constant effort because journeying with God is, is the key. Knowing God, growing, you know, a deeper relationship with God is the key. Sometimes I ask this question, do I know God? Yes, I know him, but I want to know more. Right? And people ask, Sam, do you know God? Yes, I know God, but I, I want to know him more. There is this righteous dissatisfaction. God, this isn't enough, Lord. I want to know you more. There were two young boys 
who were spending uh, their night uh, with their grandparents right so at that time these two boys held hands together with their tiny voice uh, you know with, with, with their tiny hands you know they held they started shouting and praying right god i pray for a new bicycle god i pray for a new video game god i pray for a new football shoes all these two boys were you know one of them was like really shouting and praying and his older brother came and asked him hey why are you shouting man god is not deaf and the little brother replied god is not deaf but grandma is deaf grandma cannot hear right we are not praying to grandmother we are praying to god we are praying to god ephesians 1:17 is one of the scripture that i have been praying for city ten church for all of us it says i keep asking paul says to the church in in ephesians he says i keep asking that the god of our lord jesus christ the glorious father may give the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better we should always make this prayer god give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know you better have you seen people they go to church but they do not know god they read articles they read so many books they read bible but still they do not know god they go to they listen to so many sermons on youtube but they write down notes but still they do not know god the reason is because they are spiritually blinded they have not taken this prayer closer to their hearts what is this prayer god give me the spirit of wisdom give me the revelation so that i may know you better that i may know you better spiritual blindness is this that we come to a place and saying god i think i've known you enough i've known you more right and this is the prayer that we need to pay we need to continue to pray god give me the spirit of wisdom help me to understand your scripture the more i am growing in my knowledge and experience of god the more i will grow in spiritual wisdom and revelation and you can stay spiritually hungry by growing a deeper relationship with god how is your relationship with god this morning are you spiritually hungry are you hungering and thirsting for righteousness second corinthians 5:21 says god made him who had no sin to be to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of god we are sinners we were supposed to be punished but jesus took our punishment he bore our sufferings he carried our sorrows he was crushed for our iniquities even in this lenten season let's remember the great exchange of jesus on the cross jesus took our sin but gave us his righteousness amen jesus took our sin but gave us his righteousness let let us carry this righteous dissatisfaction saying god i want to hunger f- for you more i want to thirst for you more i want to draw closer to you even in this season as we meditate on the pain and the suffering of our lord jesus on the cross let's make this prayer god i want to know you more i want to draw closer to you lord i want to come away from all those distractions one thing that i want to do is just just come before you to know you more to worship you and just to thank you because you took our sin and gave me your righteousness amen